and it has the standard complement of effects that you can modulate it with, the noise generator. <laughs> Once again, the envelope. Or VCO2, a sine wave from VCO2. Once again, you can set VCO2 to be modulated by everything else under the sun as it is modulating VCO3. There, now it's being modulated by VCO, VCO2 is being modulated by VCO1 while it is, while VCO2 is modulating VCO3. You can see that you can have a great deal of fun with that, making horrible noises, but also with finesse, those same effects can be used to make really, um, really varied organic sounds and uh, musical sounds. That is how the oscillators work. Obviously, that only scratches the surface of their functionality in regard to the rest of the synthesizer because a lot of these different modules can be directed as modulation sources to these oscillators, including varying ways that you can use these oscillators to modulate each other and cross-modulate each other and insanely modulate each other. Um, with this much control, the possibilities become really incredible, which is true for any modular synthesizer, certainly. But since this has the normal aspect going for it too, you have basically a dual usage and you have a, a little more variety because you're not responsible for all the sounds you're just responsible for the parts that you want to change and that's an exciting thing for a set of oscillators not to mention all these oscillators really sound quite good don't get me wrong you see me tuning but i've also altered these these oscillators are extremely stable um, compared to the mini moog these things hold tune and sometimes i don't have to tune I don't have to tune it when I turn it on the next day, which is really a cool thing for an analog synthesizer. Okay, I have oscillator one and two in unison. And uh, oscillator three is an octave up. Um, right now we have a square wave coming out of oscillator one a pulse wave that right now is a square wave because of where I have the pulse width set coming out of oscillator two and a saw coming out of oscillator three. Of course, we can mess around with this if we want a big, huge unison sound um, or octave sound. First of all, we can mess with the pulse width on oscillator two. Also, choose different oscillator, different waveform outputs from the various oscillators. For example, we can make them all saws. The normal setting from oscillator three is a saw right now, so all we have to do is uh, patch a saw from oscillator one and two. There's my quiet oscillator one saw. Here is oscillator two's saw, and oscillator three's saw. Um, like, but the cool thing is, like, if you want a saw output from oscillator one, um, you have to put in a chord. But if you don't, then you can you don't need to put in a chord because square is already going to the mixer over here. So, like, if you want a sine wave output from oscillator two, you just patch that in. And then you can add the square from oscillator one. And um, then you could have like the pulse width from oscillator three coming in and mix that in. Of course, the different levels in mixing give you a different timbres.
You can also do weird things like, okay, um, let's say you want the pulse width output from oscillator 2, the sine wave output from oscillator 2, and then the triangle output from oscillator 2. Now we are only, we have all of these outputs from oscillator 2 going into these inputs. We're only hearing from the other, we're only hearing from oscillator 2 at this point. <laughs> which makes some interesting effects. And then, I mean, because of the way this is set up, if you then wanted to have oscillator one still in the mix, you can choose one of these other inputs, which although labeled, you know, we're just overcoming the normaling input and these are all audio inputs. So we can bring everything back. And then you basically right now have three waveforms coming out of oscillator two and an, a waveform coming out of oscillator one and three. So basically you have three outputs coming out of oscillator two and going into the mixer, and then an output from oscillator one and an output from oscillator three. Of course, you don't get much pitch variation coming out of these three waveforms, but you know you can generate pitch variation with these other outputs, which um, makes for the possibility of some really huge sounds. noise input. Jack needs some help, it appears. So basically, I mean, we have just only touched on the oscillators, and the oscillators have so much possibility that, you know, you can see just how, how amazingly diverse the functionality of the synthesizer can be.